Hi everyone and welcome to this mobility routine. It's really simple and pretty gentle, so it should be suitable for pretty much everyone. Um, if you do experience any pain though, please listen to your body and stop doing that particular movement or just try making the movement a little bit smaller and see if that enables it to be pain free. Um, so that's the only important requirement that everything is pain free. Um, otherwise, stay moving as much as you can. Um, so this is completely free for you to log into any time uh, during these challenging times. It's really important to keep moving the body and keep tuning into your breathing. Okay, so to start with, we're just going to stand with the feet a nice hip width, um, sort of more shoulder width distance apart. And we're going to spread all ten toes out and try and lift them up off the floor. So if you can't physically lift them up off the floor, just really try and look down at them. That sometimes helps as well. So you're going to lift all ten toes, take a big breath in. Feel the rib cage front, back and sides. And then exhale as you peel little toe back to big toe. So inhale again, lift all ten toes, breathe in. Nice and wide and then exhale. Peel the toes back to the floor, little toe to big toe. One more time, breathing in. Breathing out, grounding the big toe down now. See if you can inhale and lift the other toes, except your big toes, breathing in. Holding that up, lengthening the torso as you inhale, grounding down through the feet, and then exhale, just placing the toes back on the floor, spreading them out. So two more times with that one. Breathing in, lifting, keeping the big toe down. Exhale, releasing the toes back down. One more inhale. Lift, exhale, lower. Good. And then from there, what we're going to do is just try to keep the other toes down and see if we can just lift the big toes up. So this can be a little bit tricky and again if you feel you need to look down that's fine if you can do it really well then try not to look down try and just stack your hips above your ankles breastbone above your pubic bone and head above between your shoulders breathing in holding the big toe up if you can practicing filling those ribs out to the sides and out to the back exhale starting to gently draw in through the waist feel that lifting upwards and then place the big toe back down. So we're gonna see if we can hold that again for a breath. So try not to roll in or out on your ankles as you do this. So only the big toe is lifting up, keeping those ankles nice and neutral, and then holding that for a big breath in. Exhaling, feeling the waist muscles wrap from the back, around to the front. Feeling that lift, upwards lift of your rib cage decompressing your spine and your organs. Place the toe back down. We're going to go for one more big breath there. Big toes lift. Nice big breath in, filling out, making space all around this area and then exhale. Keep that space. Hug the tummy muscles gently back and place the big toes back down. Good. And then just might want to peel off your feet a little bit or give them a little shake. So next up, we're just going to look at um, your standing alignment. So if I show you from the side, you can always practice this in front of a mirror. Uh, so how we stack our body really does uh, have an impact on how our spine health um, is. So we're just going to feel that we can weight both our feet evenly from left to right and take the weight forwards and then back and see if we can feel that weight 50 to 50 front and back and then really with your with your sides of your hips here this is going to come back until you feel a bit stacked above your ankles um, so obviously you try forwards that doesn't feel very comfortable um, kind of puts me into my lower back and if you're too far back you just feel <laughs> you're going to fall backwards so bring the hips directly above the ankles and if you can't tell then obviously check this out in a mirror, it's a lot easier. 
And the second one is to place a hand on your pubic bone and a hand on your breastbone. And we want to then try and stack the breastbone directly above the pubic bone. So the minute you start to do that and make sure your hips are back above your ankles, you'll start to feel that your abdominals have to do a little bit of work just to lengthen you in that position. So from here, the last one is just to stack the head. So if you take your hand back behind the base of the skull and then just bring your head back so it feels like it's directly between your shoulders. So if you did have a mirror again, you could check maybe the ear alignment to the shoulder um, and just that there's a nice curve in the back of the neck. So you can also press your head very gently um, back into the hand and almost use your hand to give an upwards, jet, very gentle upwards um, pull of the, of the back of the skull there to feel the length in the back of the neck. And then taking your arm back down, always feels pretty weird, but that's um, helping you get into your neutral alignment. So trying to keep that as we go through our neck and our shoulders. So you're gonna go and ground down through those feet, spread those toes out, and really connect all four corners of your feet to the floor. Check you've got your alignment, and then squeeze your hands into fists if that feels okay for you, and then very gently open your collarbones. So try and do that without pinching the shoulder blades at the back. Keep a nice amount of space around that back of the shoulders. And then from there, we're just going to take a big breath in. We're going to exhale, we're going to nod the chin towards the throat. Inhale back up. Exhale back down. This time, rotate the nose towards the right shoulder, or the left shoulder, sorry, if you're obviously watching this. And then you're going to go ear to the shoulder, keep squeezing into those arms, and then come back nose to shoulder chin to throat, opposite way, nose to shoulder, ear to shoulder, back to the nose, back to the throat, and back up, breathe in, exhale, all the time keeping it a little bit, say 20% tension throughout the body. So we're just gonna make one more round this way. And if you forget to breathe, just breathe in when you get back to center. Squeezing the shoulder blades very gently back. So when you do this exercise, just make sure you have no pain on the closing angle of the neck. If you do, then you only want to go as far as you can keep that movement pain free. So we're going to try and take the neck into some extension. If that doesn't feel good for you, then you can just leave that bit out. So we're going to breathe in and then exhale into the throat. Rotate to the right this time ear to shoulder, and then keep lifted in your torso, squeeze the shoulders down as you rotate the head back, and then ear to shoulder, nose to shoulder, chin to throat, and slowly roll up the neck again. So we're gonna do one more the opposite way, breathing in, finding a little bit of squeeze throughout the body, and then chin towards the throat, nose to the shoulder, ear to the shoulder, shoulders go down, keep space in the neck as you go round the back, ear to shoulder, nose to shoulder, chin to centre, and then rolling up your vertebrae, bone by bone, all the way till you get that head back to a neutral position. Next up, just having a look at our breathing and some arm movements to open up through the shoulders. So again, that slightly wider than hip distance stance with the feet. Um, and just a quick word on knees, just make sure you're not locking your knees back. So from the side, that would look like that for me. Um, it will feel kind of uncomfortable in the actual knee joint, like you're just pushing, putting pressure into that knee joint. So we can bend the knee slightly, and then really the, the centre of the knee joint wants to come in line more or less with your ankle. Um, so you can just try and squeeze the kneecap up there and your back of your knee should straighten. And if you press, keep the knee squeezed up, but press into your hand, you should feel those muscles all the way around your knee and your legs start to activate. So obviously, only wind that up to amount, uh, a gentle amount of tension um, at the moment, so say 20%. 
So having a go at that on both legs. So kneecaps very gently drawing up, pressing the toes um, gently towards the floor, spreading them wide. <clears throat> and then just finding your thumbs are just going to be in line with your ASIS bones here at the front of the hips. And then keeping the wrists nice and straight, we're just going to trace the arms up the body as we inhale. So keep the neck and shoulders pain free, just come as high as you feel comfortable. So you inhale, lifting elbows, shoulders stay soft, filling the ribs. And exhale, tighten the abdominals, gently wrap the waist as you let the thumbs come back down. So inhaling up, exhaling down. So in this one, we're really trying to fill the rib cage, the armpits, the collarbones, all out to the side. We're really trying to breathe from the inner center point of our body outwards. And then we're ex exhaling, drawing all the outer parts of our body into the center. Inhale. And again, exhale. So we do feel a little bit lightheaded, obviously you can change it so you don't breathe quite as deeply, but it's just a little sign that potentially you're not breathing uh, very deeply, usually. So breathing in and exhaling back down. So we're going to see if we can take that into a little bit of external rotation of the shoulders, so we're going to reach up, lift those elbows, and so if you're trying to lift the rib cage with your elbows, and then bring the palms to face forwards, so you're going to open out into a W here, and then we're going to come all the way around and down, so you breathe in, come up, open out into your W, and really hug the shoulder blades down the back, draw the abdominals back slightly, and then release those arms. Breathing in, opening out, and down, and one more, breathing in, opening out, giving a squeeze as if you're pressing your arms onto a shelf either side of you, and release back down, and then just shake out any of that tension. So next up we're going to go onto the floor, um, if you have got a mat then I recommend obviously using that. If you don't have a mat, then just choose a carpeted floor, or maybe you just put down uh, a blanket that you can just fold over maybe once or twice. Um, so, again, same rules as standing, keeping it nice and pain free, but not being afraid to move your body at the same time. And if the body feels a little bit stark or tight, always tune back into your breathing again as you make the movements and you'll probably find it will feel a lot easier. So we're going to take our feet together and then just step the feet about hip width distance apart which is easier to see as you're sitting up. So your heels want to be more or less right in line with your sit bones, so the prominent bones there in the buttocks and then you're going to take yourself down, just keeping the spine nice and long. So you can go onto your elbows and then just slide the elbows forwards to lie yourself down. If in this position your neck is at all compromised and you can't get it to feel comfortable um, and you feel that you're really getting restricted into too much neck extension, so that would look like that, uh, and it doesn't feel comfortable to bring yourself into a more neutral curve of the neck, you're going to just see if you've got a small folded up towel you could potentially just place underneath the head to make that more comfortable. So otherwise we're going to come into thumbs on ribs, fingers on hips, so same as standing, and we're just going to practice uh, some lower spinal mobility. So. This is called a pelvic tilt. All we're going to do is again inhale, try and find the back and the sides of the ribs. Feel that expansion of the body with the breath in. And then as you exhale, we're going to actually see if we can feel the pelvis pull back towards the ribs. So the space between your fingers and your thumb is going to close together. Your lower back is going to soften into the floor. 
so it looks like that. The belly is quite soft and then we're going to inhale really slowly and just feel one bone at a time that we can peel back that length into our spine. So you want to go to a comfortable point there, breathing in and then exhale, releasing back down. And my dog has now got interested in what I'm doing. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, let the belly sink back. As you let the belly sink back, on the next breath, we're going to see if we can find the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor is just located between your pubic bone and your tailbone. And the two ischium, the two sides of the, um, the two prominent bones at the bottom of the pelvis. So if you imagine a triangle right there at the base of your, of your spine, you're going to imagine the pelvic floor is located in the centre and you're going to see if you can pull upwards through that area. So another way of, of relating to it is to um, use the same muscles, so front and back passage for, for ladies, the same muscles that you use to stop you going to the toilet, but it's a very gentle contraction. So the most common problem that people have is that the pelvic floor is either too active and they can't sort of relax it, or they can only, they're a little bit imbalanced in that area, so they only really activate one side. So we're going to see if we can um, do it gently enough to work out whether we're doing left and right side. And we're also going to see if we can relax it again as we inhale because it's really um, a muscle that we want to have a control over. And, and the same for guys, uh, you do have a pelvic floor as well. <laughs> Sometimes people look at me weirdly when I say that to, you, um, to men. Um, but it's a really important muscle um, for your deep, deep support muscles which help you stay strong and healthy in your core. So we're just going to see if we can inhale, relax that muscle and exhale just very gently, imagining almost like you're pulling a tissue out of a tissue box, you're pulling that tissue up your centre. And then see if you can hold it in and make sure you're not clenching your buttocks and see if you can hold it in really gently around 20% and see if you can identify the left side, so maybe just to the left of the, of the pubic bone, and then the right side. So you've got both sides working, and if you really only feel one side, you're gonna relax that and go in a lot more gently. So you can always pause the video here and have a go at, at trying to contract that muscle. Um, otherwise, we're gonna continue on with our, adding that to our pelvic tilt. And I'm going to get rid of the top of this bit so you can actually see. Come on. Come on. So adding the pelvic floor to our pelvic tilt. Just breathing in. Feeling that expansion. And then as you exhale, you're zipping up through the pelvic floor. Just feeling, just gently growing in about 20%. And feeling that to almost a column down your centre, so inside of you here, starts to uh, feel like it's lifting upwards. And as you as you make that movement with, with that engagement, just allowing your pubic bone to rock up, your tailbone to almost tilt underneath you, and then your back will naturally just soften towards the floor. So it's very different from just kind of forcing that down. And we're going to go into that, just lifting my arm up so you can see. And then from that position, let's take the arms up towards the sky. Just create some space between the shoulder blades and the collarbones. See if you can just gently feel the plugging sensation of the arms slightly down underneath the armpit into the floor. And then from there, see if you can keep the arms still, the neck tension free. And then just peel one bone at a time back to a uh, comfortable position for your spine, trying to aim for this area to come, come level. So if there was a glass of water there, that would be level. 
So exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, little tiny engagement of pelvic floor and really making sure it feels even on both sides. Feel the whole of the back soften into the floor and then slowly, really slowly and mindfully releasing back the opposite way. So this is a great exercise for anyone with lower back pain, with any kind of sense of not feeling strong enough in that lower back or abdominal area. So exhale, belly muscles are softening, broadening, drawing gently back and inhale to release. So from there we're going to take the arms back down, find that sense of level across the front of the pelvis and if the shoulders don't relax towards the floor you can just take the arms a little bit wider out to the sides. Some people find it really hard to um, let their shoulders come back to the floor if you're quite tight across your chest. So from there, breathing in, we're just going to practice pressing into all four corners of the feet very gently. In this position, you're going to feel like you've got the outer thigh wrapping inwards. So it's not a gripping of the hips, you shouldn't feel that you're, you're gripping, but you just should feel a sense of opening from the back and then wrapping down towards your inner heels and big toes. So if you really focus gently, connecting the inner heels and the big toes towards the floor, that's going to help you avoid any jamming in the lower back area. So from there, when you feel those leg muscles start to wrap and the energy goes down towards the heel and the big toe, keeping the shoulders nice and relaxed. If you did have a towel, just pop it out for this one. You're going to see if you can breathe in, fill the ribs. And then exhale, just see if you can press into those feet to hover the hips a little way off the floor. So not going too high at all. We're going to see if we can reach the arms up, palms face down towards our feet. And you just might reach back just a tiny bit, but if you've got any shoulder discomfort, you can keep the arms about a shoulder height and then just roll back down your spine all the way to that level pelvis. Release the hands back to the floor. Open the collarbones again. Breathe in. So an exhale, so if you can pick up through your pelvic floor, you don't have to tuck. I want you to stay neutral as you lift. So I'm not tucking like this, I'm actually neutral and feeling that wrapping sensation of the thighs. Keeping the shoulders and neck relaxed, reaching up with the arms. And pretend you're pressing against something with your hands. So as you press against something with your hands, keep that feeling of pushing forwards as you take your arms back and then roll back down, release the hands, inhale, exhale to lift, so we're just going to do two more, up with the arms, keep feeling like you're pressing back, just reaching to a point that feels comfortable and then reaching up slightly more as you roll back down to allow the space to come between the shoulders and then release. So we're going to do one more breathing in. Exhale, lifting up. Making sure that you feel as level as you can here, so you can always check that. And then letting go of, you know, over gripping in the hip area, just really using your feet. Coming up with the arms, pressing into something with the hands. Only going back to a point where you feel you can keep that upwards energy as you reach a little bit more and roll down and release. Okay, so from here we're just going to go for a um, hip activation. So as you get stronger at this, you can obviously hold it for longer. You can always pause the video and do some more reps if you want to, but start nice and easy. Left foot presses the floor. Abdominals, we're going to engage the pelvic floor just a little bit, 20%, and feel that flattening and widening sensation of the, of the abdomen. Keeping the shoulders either on the floor if, you, if you're not comfortable or reaching them up, arms up. We're going to see if we can, again, create that width across the collarbone. So you might reach the arms up towards the sky and then draw them back down, hug them down the sides of the body just enough to feel a connection down the side of the shoulder blade there. Not so much that you create tension 
um, in your neck or your lower back. So from here, feeling that hug of the shoulder blade down the side, both sides, press left heel into the floor, and then see if you can keep level, pelvic floor and abdominal, as you lift that right knee. So with the right knee, bringing it above the hip, and you're going to see if you can take your right hand and press the knee up towards the hand. Keep tension free in your neck. So draw that right shoulder back and press and breathe. And as you press and breathe, make sure you're not pressing your lower back into the floor. You're just activating the muscles in the hip on this raised leg and you're pressing the foot to the floor on the leg that's down, activating the muscles in the back of that leg. So it's quite similar to walking and then coming back down. We're going to switch sides, so drawing the shoulder blades gently down the side of the body, trying to straighten the elbows if you can and try and space out the collarbones. Connect again, press the right foot into the floor. Notice if you find this difficult and you want to rock from left to right, you're just going to stop at the point where you raise the heel. Don't actually lift the leg and just stop there until you can find a really balanced sense of connection in the body rather than feeling only one side of the body work or rather than feeling yourself rock off to one side. So you can always lift the head and check that you've got a line down the centre from pubic bone to breastbone to chin because it's really hard to tell where your body is in space. And then left hand, left thigh, draw the left shoulder back slightly, breathe and create that press of the leg towards the hand. And then as you create that press of the leg, just bring your awareness to your right side as well. Make sure that that foot's still pressing the floor slightly and create some activation on the back of that right hip through that press of the floor. Take two more breaths. So if that's uncomfortable to hold, obviously just come back down, do a shorter rep and then release. So this time we're going to do the same, but we're going to keep the arms here as we go. You can always pause the video and just practice that bit if you want to. So from here, pressing left foot to floor, lifting right knee up, drawing the shoulders down the side of the body. Feel that you create that energy from the sides of the shoulders into the waist. Keep the neck and shoulders tension free, so you can always check the neck and then back down. So we're going to breathe in, exhale. Right foot presses floor, shoulders draw gently down the side of the armpit and breathe. And then release. So one more each side, pressing that leg into the floor on the left, making sure your knee doesn't drift off out to the side. Exhale, lift. And then lower. And then release those arms all the way back down. We're just going to do a gentle rotation of our hips. Take the arms out just a little bit lower than shoulder height, maybe say 45 degrees. And then really slowly and mindfully, we're going to press the feet into the floor as we roll the knees a little way over to the right. So you're not trying to let the knees drop onto the floor, you're trying to control that movement, keeping your left shoulder on the floor. So inhale, feeling that you've got the contact between your feet and your floor to support your hips as you come up, and exhale over to the other side. So the other thing that people do in this is they lift their ribs away from the floor in order to get their knees to the floor, but what we really want to do is see if we can keep quite a neutral spine, so ribs not popping up as we take the legs over and see if we can keep that connection between our body parts and the floor where necessary to control the movement because when you control the movement you're working the muscles around the joints if you were to just let go and let yourself fall to the floor you haven't got any stability around any of your joints as you do the movement so it's not saying tense everything up, it's saying find that connection so that you can create that stability as you move so that you can be pain free. 
if you do have any problems in the lower back. And then coming over again, we're going to take our upper body into the equation as well. So we're going to reach the left arm up as we take the knees over to the right. Keep reaching until you roll all the way onto your side. And then you can reach forwards even more with that left arm, stretching out the side of the body, coming back. And just keep breathing, opening the arms out, reaching up towards the sky, following your hips across, reaching fingertips beyond the lower hand and then coming back. So the head can just stay resting on the floor. If it doesn't feel comfortable for the neck, obviously you can put a towel under the head again. And just see how that movement feels for you, taking it nice and slowly, just experiencing that opening sensation particularly in the waist maybe in the chest just going to do one more each side coming back if you want to take a little bit further you can stretch the leg a little bit there so i'll just show you that one on the other side so you would just straighten out that underneath, that top leg, and then come all the way back to the centre. So next up, super basic spinal mobility, um, this time on hands and knees, so it adds an element of shoulder strengthening. Um, if you're not comfortable on your wrists, you might want to come onto your fists or your forearms. So we're going to look at some wrist opening in some other videos, but for this one, just keeping it simple, taking your um, hands about shoulder width apart. If you've got any wrist pain, you could try taking them slightly in front of the shoulders um, to alleviate that or go for the fists or the forearms. So breathing in here and just weighting your limbs neutrally. Think about your head alignment. The gaze is just towards the end of your mat and the hands want to press the floor away slightly so that you can fill the space between your shoulder blades with your spine without rounding your back. Allow for a little natural curve in your lower spine, natural concave curve. So from there, breathing in, and then exhaling, find the pelvic floor again. So this is a really good way of engaging left and right side of the pelvic floor, and making sure that you can engage the pelvic floor without changing your spine. So breathe in, allow the body to expand, and then exhale, left and right side, really gently. And then try and focus on whichever side you don't feel as easily. As you pull up, your pubic bone is gonna come forwards and you're gonna work your way bone by bone up your back until you create a C shape, the nose towards the pubic bone. Breathe in, exhale, hug up a little bit more, even hug the knees inwards towards each other. And then you're gonna slowly release as you inhale, you can go back the opposite way. So tipping bone by bone, try and keep the space between each vertebrae so you avoid any pinching. And lengthen the tummy muscles, slide the collarbones forwards and up, and lift the chin just to a point that's comfortable. And then going again. So if you've got a mirror, you can have a look at some point and just check your curve looks as even as possible. So we all have places that we can move better than others. So you're rounding in this one, and for a lot of us, the upper back rounds a lot more easily than the lower back. Breathe into it. And then going nice and slowly back the other way. So you really feel, does the right side of your back move the same way as the left side? So you just bring awareness to whichever side feels a little bit more sticky. 
And then, again, lifting the head, but still feeling really strong in those arms. And then releasing back. So you're trying to spread the fingers apart a little bit. Line the middle finger up with the outer edge of your mat. As you move, really keeping all contact points between the corners of your hands and the floor. And then coming back just to a neutral spine. And lastly, we're just going to look at a couple of exercises lying down on the floor to keep your shoulders nice and strong and healthy. So often in daily activities in life, sort of cooking, washing up, driving, cleaning, picking kids up, everything we do is, is kind of making us become a little bit more rounded. So the next two exercises are really, really crucial to keep the back shoulder muscles, the posterior uh, and the back of the, the, the spinal muscles um, nice and strong. So see how you go um, and just start smaller if you find them difficult. You'll soon find that you build strength and you can hold, start to hold it for a little bit longer. If you do get any issues with your lower back, just try placing a folded up pillow underneath your hips here um, and just be mindful of that. You don't want to feel uh, lower back discomfort during this. So coming down into a uh, prone position, lying on your tummy. The first one we're going to do is just to mobilise the upper spine. So you can take your hands, put them one on top of each other and then place the forehead down on the hand, place a little bit of a pressure into the mat, legs are hip width and just relaxed, pull your navel up gently and see if you can feel your abdominal area lifting away from the floor slightly and that's going to help you lengthen your lower spine. So that's opposite and then drawing the navel up that will help you lengthen there. See if you can do, do that again and feel the pelvic floor again, left and right side, pulling up very gently. And make sure that you don't grip your buttocks to do that. So it's going to just really come from the deep abdominals. Place the forehead onto the hands, draw the shoulders gently away from the ears and press the hands very lightly into the floor. That's going to activate the muscles underneath the arms and more into the armpit area. So we're going to inhale and we're just going to really slowly peel our head away from our hands and only come up as far as feels comfortable and then we're going to roll back down. So we're going to inhale, exhale come up, pull the navel gently away from the floor Keep the shoulders drawing away from the ears, only come up as far as comfortable and then roll back down. You can switch the hands the other way. This really is um, a very accessible um, version for most people. So if you've got any shoulder discomfort, you might start with the hands a little bit closer to you. Um, if you're finding that really difficult, we're going to go... Um, taking your hands just underneath your shoulders. Um, if you feel comfortable in your shoulders, take those hands slightly wider um, to create a little bit more space there. If that is not available to you either, you can try the same, but with your hands down beside you. So hands up here is the next one to try. Forehead on the floor, breathe in. Exhale, deep abdominals, pelvic floor, rolling gently. I should say pelvic floor deep abdominals. And as you come up, keep the space between the collarbones and avoid pinching the shoulder blades together. So that would be pinching a little bit. So we're going to just come up wide collarbones and obviously keeping the lower back um, pain free, tension free, and then rolling back down. You're aiming to feel both sides pretty evenly, both sides of your upper back. And just breathe into that 
and roll that down. So make the movement quite fluid. You're just continually moving, exhaling up, inhaling down. You can experiment having maybe fingertips on the floor. That's going to open up the chest a little bit more. Really press into those fingertips and then roll back down. So just aiming to create a bit of movement in the upper back. Last one. And then release. Hands back down. If you do get tight in your lower back, you can just gently rock the hips from left to right. So our next one we're going to do is activating the lower limbs as well. So I'm just going to show you from the back that you're going to connect your toes together and you're going to take, um, no, come on, come on baby, sit down one more minute, sit down, sit down, one more minute, stay there, stay. Uh, last exercise on our front, we're going to um, take the toes together, so the balls of the big toe are going to be together like so, and we're going to use that connection point to help activate the arch muscles in your feet, so the muscles through the underneath um, sole of the foot. If you do get cramped, then obviously come back out of it if you need to, um, and keep trying because it will only help you get stronger. So you might get cramped the first few times you do this. So from here, we're going to toe big toes together and the knees are maybe just very gently wrapping inwards. You want to feel that you're taking a wrap from the back of the thigh towards the front of the thigh, just a little bit. So we're going to a bit of internal rotation for your hips. And feel like you squeeze the toes Pull upwards in the soles of the feet and create a, an energy or an activation up the inner thigh towards your groin. So you're really sort of as if you're pulling up your trousers into your groin. So about here, you're just pulling up those, those inner thigh muscles. So our inner thigh muscles are really helping us engage into our, our deep abdominals. So we're working really from our toes to the soles of our feet, inner thighs, into our pelvic floor, into our abdominals, but at about 20%, so quite a low um, engagement that you can start to increase as you start to feel stronger, but it's really important you can engage it more gently as well as more strongly. Um, so the next one, you can always leave your hands down throughout all of this if you do feel you get shoulder or neck tension. We want to be avoiding that. So you can take your hands and place your backs of your hands to the floor. Your forehead's going to be on the floor, we're going to be the same thing, same way of breathing as we were. So we're going to come up on an exhale. So relax, get your connections going as you exhale. So breathing in. Exhale, toes, groins, thighs. And then you should really feel that the lower back can be quite um, tension-free, completely tension-free. Roll the collarbones open at the front. So rather than squeezing the shoulder blades back, think of getting wider through your collarbones. Lift the head off the floor if your neck is tension free. Chins very slightly towards the throat. Breathe there for a couple of breaths and just see that you feel more or less level on your body from left to right. And then roll back down. You can turn your head to the side and just let the shoulders relax. So we're going to squeeze the toes again, breathe in. Head to centre, exhale as you come up. Really try and go for that squeezing of the back of the arm. And then if you feel comfortable in the shoulders and that you've got absolutely no tension in the neck, you can go ahead and raise those arms off the floor. But try to see if you can really keep that arm as straight as you can, squeezing the back of the arm towards the body reaching the fingertips towards the toes, and don't forget to work into those legs. It really is a full body exercise. 
Tip forward slightly on your front ribs if you do feel too much tension in the lower back. You're just going to come longer and lower. Really energizing those legs. And then you can turn the head the opposite side that time. We're just going to do one more rep. So turn the head to the side. Inhale, come to centre. Squeeze the legs. Zip the groins upwards. Even on both sides. Rolling. Collarbones wide and open. Really finding the energy in the backs of the arms. Bringing the back of the head in line with the spine and dropping forwards on your front ribs if you need to. Legs stay down if you do have a tendency to overwork in the lower back, but if you really feel you can keep the length in those legs, the toes can always come off the floor and you can start to engage the legs a little bit more. Keep the length reaching, crown of the head, toes, two points reaching away from each other and then release back down. So to come up and hold it for that long, it does require a little bit more strength. So if you haven't done this a lot or you're not feeling very strong in that position today, just go with what feels comfortable for you. Maybe leave the hands and the head on the floor and just work with the legs and the shoulders. So we're gonna come into a little bit of relaxed breathing now to wind your central nervous system right back down. So all that connection you created in the body has got to learn to totally relax as well. Um, so lying on, the, on your back, placing your towel under your head if you, if you feel that uh, makes your neck more comfortable. And then just having the knees bent, the feet a little way away from you so you can really relax down in the hips. So we're going to go for counting as we, as we breathe in our head. Um, this time we're really going to focus the breath on the abdominal area. So as you inhale, you're aiming to fill this space between the ribs and the hips as we inhale. So we're just breathing through the nose if that feels comfortable for you. Obviously if you can't breathe through your nose, then breathe through the mouth, but ideally through the nose. And Inhaling is a sense of space and opening, particularly the abdominal area. And as we exhale, we're just going to focus on just relaxing and letting go and being really heavy towards the floor or the bed. So if you want to try this just lying on the bed as well, that's great. The other thing I do in this position is if you have something you can put your feet up on, so like a chair, it's a really um, nice way to relax um, the body as well and also complete your practice. So if you want to try that out, go ahead. So we're just going to take our hands onto our abdomen, abdominal area, breathing in. You can really feel that expansion and also the expansion of the lower back. Exhale. Just release. So it's a little bit like feeling a balloon expand inside of you as you breathe in. And exhale, release. So you'll probably hear lots of tummy gurgling as you start to relax. That's a really good sign. Don't panic if you don't hear anything though. And we're going to try and inhale for four seconds. So inhaling. And exhaling. So inhale for four. And see if you can exhale for about eight seconds. If that's too much, just shorten it. Inhaling four. Exhaling eight. Inhaling four. Exhaling eight. Now, if you're not up to exhaling for eight seconds yet, you just stick with this for a little bit longer and your body should respond. And the more you practice it, for sure, you'll be able to exhale for eight seconds. If you're doing that quite comfortably, you can inhale for four seconds and then practice a really short breath hold 
for anywhere between two seconds to seven seconds, and then you exhale for eight seconds again. So inhaling for four, holding for seven, exhale for eight. So really, only if that feels comfortable and you have enough breath to do. If not, start with a lower number and with a little bit of practice, you'll definitely be up to that, up to that number. And I'm just going to leave you here breathing now for at least five or ten minutes. Uh, try and make that a daily practice if you can. So thank you for joining me and hopefully you're feeling a lot better. If you do have any questions or comments, just message me and I'd be happy to answer them or help with any queries that you might have. Have a lovely day. Take care of yourselves.